Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Welcome to today's show. My name is Greg Fritz and this is Good News. And we are so excited to be coming to you wherever you are today. We've prayed for you and we've prayed that you would find this program and that God would use me to speak a word in season. In fact, as I've uh, prepared for this show, I was reminded of a scripture. It says, as cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. And Tulsa, Oklahoma may be a far country from you, but we've got good news that will refresh you and encourage you and bless you. In fact, there's so much good news in the Bible, it's going to take, uh, it'll take eons and ages to understand it all and to transfer it all, transmit it all. But God has sent preachers all over the world to bring good news to people. And remember, this good news is for everyone. There's no one that it doesn't apply to. So we have a word for you today. I believe it's a word that's going to bless you and help you. We've been studying um, for, since the beginning of our show, and this is a, a new program that we've designed. And we've been studying and starting our study in Genesis, and where God said in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We've spent quite a bit of time discussing this subject from every angle, and really the two main uh, streams of thought or worldviews, one is that there is a God and the other is there is not a God. And we took the time to show you, and if you'd like to get study notes, we have those available on our website. You can download them for free, or you can write in, call in, email us, and we'll try to mail them to you uh, if you live in the continental U.S. And those are free, and you can follow along with the program, and you can kind of see where we've been, and you can see where we're going. But the two worldviews that are conflicting are the view, one view says there is a God, and the other says there is not a God. The, these are very important distinctions. Uh, it's not just a matter of opinion. People who say and believe there is no God make decisions based on, on that stance, on that position. And uh, it's very important for us as human beings to have a higher power, a higher authority. It's important to, to have um, God to come in and tell us, define what it is, uh, to, to what's right and what's wrong, what it, uh, the definition of marriage, man and woman. And, and it's so important for our courts to have that to look to. Because if they don't have the Bible and the standards that are set out by God to go by, then everything is arguable. And it's difficult really to make simple obvious decisions. So we, of course, uh, promote the view and preach the view that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then we moved on and made this point, and I want to continue with this today, and that is this, that God is a God of abundance. And we saw in Romans 1.20 where God's attributes are clearly seen by the things which He made. And one of God's attributes that you can see in creation is abundance. He made an abundance of living creatures. In fact, let's just uh, start there in Genesis. If you would uh, turn with me to Genesis 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 20. And we'll look at some of these scriptures that show how God is a God of abundance. In fact, notice the uh, times that that word abundance is mentioned in different forms. Verse 20, Then God said, Let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. Let the birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded. And according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. So He created abundance, and then in verse 22 He says, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters in the seas, let the birds multiply on the earth. So not only did He create abundance, but He blessed abundance, and He told it to multiply. And that's why everywhere you go, still to this day, anywhere in the world you go, there are animals, there are plants, there are organisms, some you can't even see. The world is filled with life because God created life in abundance, because He's a God of abundance. And one of the points that we were making uh, when we closed our last show was how this shows us the, the intention of God. God intended from the very beginning to provide for us 
He did not create human beings to live in lack or he didn't create the planet to run out of resources. That's, uh, uh, that's not something that we need to worry about or even be concerned about. God created the world with the foreknowledge of all that we would need and all that would be necessary to sustain our lives. And because God is a, an omniscient God and a God of abundance, there will be plenty here until we're finished. And that's another distinction that's important to make is that this world in the current state is not eternal. It's not going to last forever. And that's why people who believe in God and believe the Bible can rest assured that we're not going to run out of natural resources because God put plenty of everything here. And at some point in time, in the future, God will end the world and the world will come to a, a close. This dispensation will end. The Bible says he'll fold it up like a cast off garment and just throw it away. And then he'll make a new one. And I'm convinced through the scriptures, through our understanding of God's nature, that there will be plenty of resources here until that day comes. So you have a different mindset if you look at the world as temporary than if you didn't believe in God and you think that the world was some cosmic accident, that we were all here accidentally, we're lucky just to be alive, then you would think that the world has to last forever and that it's, everything must be sustainable and that pollution is the worst thing that could ever happen. And I made the point that, you know, God knew we were going to have some pollution. You don't have people without some waste, without some excess. And I think we should clean up our messes, throw out our garbage, take care of the ecosystem and do our best. But listen, some of these things that society is so focused on are not really problems. God wanted us to have all that we would need so we could focus on the real, real problems of life and the real challenges of getting to know Him and dealing with sin and raising a family, uh, having a career, paying the bills, and doing what you're responsible to do a as a citizen and as a human being. And God knew that we would have those needs and He wants us to be focused on meeting those needs. And so worry uh, and, and care and anxiety is not something that God wants for His children. There are so many scriptures in the Bible that, that warn us and, and encourage us not to worry, but to trust God. And I want to get to some of those today because I think people deal with this all over the world. There are a lot of cares and a lot of pressures that come upon people. And if you don't know how to handle them, they can really get in your head and they can really make life miserable. Uh, I, I remember what I heard somebody say. Uh, they said, worry is like interest paid on a debt that you may never have. And that's really the truth. If we could just look at the things that concern us, that dominate our thinking, some of them haven't happened and some of them may never happen. And why should we spend time worrying about something if it may not even happen? That's just a waste of time and emotion that really life's too short for that. So I want to go on here in, uh, in Genesis and then we're going to spring into the New Testament. But Genesis chapter 1 and we'll look at verse 20. Um, oh, let's go down to 28. And then God blessed them. This is the man and the woman. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. That was God's mandate. That was God's plan. Development and cities and buying property and developing it. It's, it's, that's God's will for mankind. We just have it in us to develop things, to build things, to create, to, to uh, advance. And that's something that God has put in us from the very beginning. And there are a lot of forces out there that would come against progress and come against uh, advancement. But listen, we're all for technology and the advancements of science. These things have made life better for people. We're, we're all for medical improvements and discoveries, new medicine, new techniques that save lives. God's in the life-saving business. He's in the life-giving business. So uh, I'm just in favor of progress. I'm in favor of progress in every area, and I believe God is too. Uh, I don't believe we should feel guilty about living our lives in this modern age and driving automobiles, having air conditioning in our homes and flying air in airplanes. I believe that's part of God's plan. And we wouldn't have this knowledge. We wouldn't know how to develop um, and, and use electricity or harness the law of lift that's used to, to fly an airplane if God hadn't given us the wisdom to do that. 
So I, I like the, the um, book of Luke where he talks about Satan and God. And it says that, uh, that God came to give us life, but Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. And you can readily see that the advancements in technology have brought life. They made life better for human beings. In fact, the, the um, life expectancy has increased in the modern world. And all of these things are good. God's behind that. God's not some old geezer that's, uh, that's, a, that's a stingy and he's some miser that wants the worst for his people. God created us and he said there in the garden, in the, on the very first uh, day that man and woman came to, into being, he said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. And I read that word in the Amplified Bible, the word subdue. It means using all of its vast resources in the service of God and man. And so God wants us to use the resources of the earth. And we sometimes can get so focused on, on conserving and saving that we forget to use it. Uh, it was put here for us to use, and God's not nervous. He's not upset when we use the resources that He's placed here for our good. In fact, I think it pleases God. I think like any father, like any provider, God doesn't care if we use resources. He just wants us to recognize Him. He wants us to, to thank Him and be grateful. And it just doesn't bring any glory to God when you live your life and you're bitter and resentful. But, uh, you know, that's one of the um, reasons we pray over our food. We give thanks every day that God provided food for us to eat. He provides clothes for us to wear. And we just want Him to know we recognize that. We're thankful for that. And we give Him the credit for it. And, you know, people may think that it's because of their genius or their hard work or their ingenuity that they're able to eat, that they're able to buy a home, that they're able to make a living and pay their bills. But really those systems where you trade your, uh, your ingenuity, your education, your expertise for money, that whole system was put in place by God. And if it hadn't been for God, we wouldn't have known what to do with our intelligence. We wouldn't have known how to get by in life. And so God has set up all these systems and they look very natural. Looks like it's just a worldly system run by worldly people. But behind the scenes, there is a God, a creator, a provider. And He set these things into motion and He's put them into place for your good. And even if people don't believe in God, they still take advantage of His systems. They still take advantage of the fact that He made them and put the resources on the earth. The Bible says the rain, God causes it to rain on the just and the unjust. So everybody gets to take advantage of the creation. Everybody really gets to take advantage of God's generosity. And it just gives Him glory when we recognize Him and we thank Him for it uh, because He's really responsible for it all. Uh, we couldn't create one thing if it wasn't for God. I was told this funny story the other day that some scientists got together and, and they had discovered the origin of life. And they had discovered how life came into being without God. And they had decided that they didn't need God anymore. And God walks up into their discussion and they saw Him and they said, look, we don't need you anymore. We've discovered how life originated and it didn't include you at all. And he says, well, that's very interesting. Well, show me your discovery. And they reached down and they took up some dirt and they were about to change it. And he said, uh-uh-uh, use your own material. Don't use mine. So that just goes to show that we may think that we've got something nobody else has or we can do something that's just ours specifically. We've pulled ourselves up by our own bootstraps. But really, if God hadn't put these things in place, uh, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be able to live one day without the grace and the generosity of God that exists across this planet. Listen, He's a good God and He loves people and He's gone to great lengths to make the earth habitable uh, for people and for animals and plants. And all of these things were done for our good. Jesus was, was uh, 
of course, the Son of God, and he saw things more through God's eyes. And he said some things that help us understand how heaven's attention is directed so much toward us. And I know you may think this sounds like it's all man-focused, and that's not my intention. Uh, you know, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we do that, and we recognize that. But if you read the book of Genesis, you can see that the attention really is focused on God and man. And, and that's really the theme of the entire Bible, is God and man and their relationship um, one to another. And Jesus made this statement, and I want to go there because I think this gives us a, a, a little insight into heaven's perspective. If you would turn with me to Matthew, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, Jesus said, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And are you not of more value than they? And so I, I believe this ties in with, with Genesis. We just read how he created the birds and he created abundance and he blessed it and he told it to be fruitful and multiply. And the way Genesis focuses its attention on, on man and God's creation of man, uh, it should bring assurance. It should bring comfort to anybody that reads it. Anybody that looks at the Bible can see how much, how precious man is to God. And so Jesus is saying, look at the creation, look at the birds, look at the, the, at the, the abundance of life around you. And your father feeds those birds. Are you not of more value than a bird? Which of you by worrying, he's talking about worry, can add one cubit to his stature? And then in verse 28, I think it's very interesting. He says, why do you worry about clothing? He's like confused. Jesus is puzzled because he knows how much God cares for us. He knows the attention that heaven gives to us. And he's puzzled at how we could possibly worry. How, he's saying, can you who believe in a loving Heavenly Father, how can you worry about clothing? Can't you see what God has done? Can't you see all that He's made and, and the, the, the abundance of life that is on the earth and all of it is dependent on God for their survival? Every bit of it depends on God providing for them summer and winter and, and, and year round to have a nest or, or to migrate or to eat the food that they eat. How in the world could they ever survive if it wasn't for God? And if God is, is attentive to their needs as, as just birds. How much more is he focused on your needs as a human being, the, real, the, the object of his affection? And so he says, why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil and they don't spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And so even the, the, the plants and, and the, um, the, the, those forms of life that sprout out of the ground, seeds, the lowest forms of life on earth, they're still dependent on God. He uh, allowed them to, to grow and to feed and to and reproduce. And Jesus' point is, if, if your Heavenly Father is taking care of flowers and He's taking care of birds, uh, won't, he, won't He much more take care of you? And then he goes on to say, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Very important questions. Uh, it's, and this is true for you no matter where you are. And you may think, well, you live in the United States, so you, it's easy for you to say that. Well, Jesus didn't say this to just American citizens. These truths belong to everyone. No matter where you are in the world, God knows you. He knows your needs, and He has budgeted your life into the, the world economy. In fact, the world is here, and the resources that you need are here for you. And you can believe God and trust God. He wants you to be able to sleep at night. He wants you to be able to face life knowing that He's going to care for you and take care of you. He's not going to leave you without. He's going to make sure that you're clothed, that you have food to eat. And these words were spoken back when their, their, their life was a lot simpler. There was no electricity, uh, therefore no utility bills. Uh, people walked. 
where they went. There was no public transit. There was no automobiles. And did you know you have to have those things to live in the modern world today? God knows that. God's not saying, you know, you, don't, you could just go back to, and live in a cave and walk everywhere. That's not God's intention for us. He knows that we, in many countries today, you need an automobile or you can't function. You can't get where you need to go. And if you live in one of those countries and you don't have an automobile, I encourage you, believe God today. God will answer your prayers and meet your needs. And whatever it is you need in life, whatever you need to function, to be a citizen, to do God's will, He'll provide it for you. You may have to take these scriptures literally. I've done it many times. You may have to act just as if God here, Jesus, is speaking to you and say, Lord, I need this to make it. I, I'm not able to make ends meet in my current situation. How can I change? What is it that I need to, to, to be successful, to pay my bills, to have what I need to function and to do the will of God in my life? And did you know God will open doors for you? God will provide for you. God will make sure you have what you need. And this is exactly what Jesus is dealing with here in Matthew chapter 6. He's saying, why? Why are you worrying about these things? Haven't you always eaten? Haven't you always had clothes to wear? Haven't I done a good job up to now? And really, all of us would have to admit that somehow we've eaten. Somehow we've had clothes to wear. Somehow we've had our needs met up to this point. And, and, but we're always will, ready to, to doubt, doubt tomorrow. What, but what about tomorrow? What about the next day? What about next month? And God's saying, what am I going to have to do to convince you that I am going to take care of you? He's going to underwrite your life. He is going to take, make sure that you get your needs met. Now, He's not going to reward laziness. And it doesn't mean that you can just go buy things that you can't afford. But, but if you can be reasonable... And, and live your life, you know, according to, to God's will for your life, He will always provide for you. He will always take care of you. He has up to now, and He'll continue to do so. And I think what Jesus was trying to say here was, why are you wasting your time worrying about things that have never happened, things that aren't going to happen? I'm going to take care of you. My Heavenly Father, who takes care of the birds, who takes care of the plants, He's going to take care of you because all of those things were put here for your, for your use and to support human life. Then he goes on to say in verse 32, this is still Matthew chapter 6, For after all these things the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. God knows what we need before we do. God knew what we needed before we were born. And He has put uh, those things into our path, into our future. He's built them into the creation. He's put them here in the ecosystem. And uh, there's plenty here for you. And I've said this many times. Look, I don't want money that belongs to someone else. I don't want your money, but I do want to believe God for my money. In other words, a certain amount of, of the wealth that's here on this earth, on this planet, was designated for you. God wants to take care of you. And it's not wrong for you to set your faith in God and say, Lord, I want you to meet my needs. I want you, the God of creation, who knows everything, who brought me into this world without my even knowing or asking, you made it possible for me to live. I trust you to meet my needs. Philippians 4, uh, 13 says, God supplies all all of our needs according to His riches and glory. And God does do that, and it brings great comfort and assurance. I'm just taking some time today to help you uh, in your life. You know, if we could eliminate the worry, the concern that we give to our provision, just, just our provision, if we could just turn that over to God and realize that He's going to take care of that, we'd have a lot more time on our hands to be happy. And that's what the Heavenly Father wants from you. He's your provider. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
Psalm 23 says. And if we're his sheep and he's our shepherd, he wants us to be happy sheep. He wants us to be fluffy sheep. He wants us to have a smile on our face. He wants us not to have a care in the world because he's our shepherd. What kind of shepherd do you think he is? Do you think he's a shepherd that would starve us? Do you think he's a shepherd that would put us on starvation rations and, and, and a cruel shepherd? No, he anoints our head with oil. He leads us to, into green pastures. He allows us to lie down beside still waters. He restores our soul. He loves us so much. The last thing he wants you to do is spend your time worrying about your provision. God is a provider and he's really good at what he does. If he can take care of the birds and if he can take care of the plants, he can certainly take care of you. And he is already, he already has been take care, taking care of you. Sometimes we just didn't recognize it. So I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this section of our, sh of our study today. I've certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. Again, I want to remind you that we have study notes available on our website. You can go to our website and download them. We can mail them to you and you can study along with us. I want to also remind you that I have a book and uh, it has a lot of these things in it. In fact, we're teaching a lot of the subject matter from my book and the book is entitled Good News. And the, the subtitle is It's So Good the Bad News Doesn't Matter. And if you've had enough bad news, if the negative reports have been overwhelming, this book will encourage you, it'll bless you, it'll strengthen your faith, and it'll lead you on a journey from the beginning to the end of man's redemption. It's the greatest story ever told. And I encourage you to get one today. And uh, we are so glad you chose to spend this time with us. And we look forward to the very next show. Hope you can be with us. God bless you and I'll see you soon. It seems bad news is covering the globe these days. Yet God has good news for you that's so good the bad news won't matter anymore. To order your copy of Greg's book, visit our website, gregfritz.org. Hello, this is Greg Fritz, and I've been bringing to you what I call good news. It is the message of our redemption, the story of man's redemption. And I have thoroughly enjoyed bringing this tru these truths to you uh, on these shows. And we have notes that you can follow along. They're outlines that I use to preach from and have used them all over the world. And if you'd like a copy of these notes so you can keep up with us, know where we've been or where we're going in the teaching, please go to our website. And there are details there and you can download them for free or we'll mail them to you if you live here in the continental U.S. Want more good news? Visit our website anytime, gregfritz.org, for more teaching materials. That's gregfritz.org. And I just wanted to remind you of this. I'm actively traveling all the time, all over the world, different cities and states. And you can go to my website and check out my itinerary. And if I'm ever in your area, I would love to see you. And we would love for you to come to the meeting, wait around till it's over, come up front, introduce yourself. I would love to see you out there somewhere soon. Coming up next on Good News with Greg Fritz. And you know why we would worry? Because we don't realize how important we are to God. Let me tell you something today. You may not put much value on your own life. You may not see yourself very highly, but that doesn't mean that you're not highly valued. In fact, your self-worth, the worth of the, and the value of your life is not really dependent on you. It's really determined any product, the value of any product is determined by what somebody's willing to pay for it. And let me tell you what Jesus gave for your life. What God was willing to pay for you was the life of His only Son. That means you're priceless. That means in heaven's economy, you are the most important thing on this planet. This isn't humanism and we're not trying to exalt mankind. But listen, the gospel does show us the value of human life. Join us next time for Good News with Greg Fritz.